Hi, and welcome everyone. I'm so very grateful that you came to celebrate with me and my body of work uh, off grid. Women of the Mesa, and cry already. Uh, okay, anyway, and I'm so grateful to all of the friends of mine who posed and wrote things about their lives to further deepen your experience of what the painting is about and what it's like to live uh, in an alternative way and, and not what, you know, the general America, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of communities around that, that use um, solar power and uh, active solar, passive solar, and, you know, kind of carve out a life for themselves. And there's a lot of creative people out near me, um, musicians like Ruth, um, uh, painters, photographers like Miyaki Maia, and um, if I missed anyone, I'm sorry, and massage therapists and clay workers and so many wonderful women that have shared their part of their life with me and inspired me to do the paintings. Um, actually, it was my friend Donna who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight because she's at her grandson's college graduation. And um, I believe it's college, though he doesn't look old enough to be graduating from college. And um, she was sitting across my kitchen table and you know I could feel some, some, something coming my way and I couldn't really identify what it was, but I knew that something was changing and I knew it was coming fast and I knew it was very strong. And Donna sat across from me at my kitchen table and talked about her own relationship to the mountain, to the land, to the flowers, to the weeds, to the eagles, to everything that is um, in our community, in our uh, ecosystem really out on the mesa. And the mesa is, uh, it really doesn't have too many trees. It's, um, and the sun of course in New Mexico screams. It's, it's very loud and then the wind is pretty loud too. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, blessings to us if we can have a garden or um, you know, we can support our animals that we love. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll just read a, read a little because I already prepared it, if you don't mind. Um, my art gene, what I call my art gene, was passed from my grandmother um, Branch and my mother. In 1915, my grandma Branch worked in a sewing factory when she was like 17 years old and, and paid her own way through art school. Uh, of course, she didn't stick with it. She got married and had kids like they all did. And um, uh, at the time, uh, if you went to art school and you were a young woman, you could not draw nude models. You had to draw from plaster casts. So um, all the drawings I have of her have like flat, back of the heads are flat. Um, anyway, I have quite a few of her drawings. Um, and. Uh, in my former life, I was an illustrator and um, designer uh, on the East Coast, but I, I longed for, um, you know, in my retirement coming, uh, I longed for silence and space to do my art and to just follow that inner guide, whatever that is. And um, so, yeah, and then, uh, coming through, when I checked out my land, I went to the Nedra Matucci Gallery and I saw some work by the Tao Society of Artists. I didn't know about them. That's amazing that I didn't know about them, but I didn't. And I d identified, it was just like, that is me. I feel that inside of me. And so uh, it was short shortly after that I started building my house. And it's a straw bale house, it's off grid passive and active solar, I have propane, and you know, someone asked me, how do you charge your phone? <laughs> In my electrical outlet. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, the, uh, the first art that I really saw as a child, my mother had one art book, and it was crayon, you know, orange crayon written all over it. But I saw Degas, and I remember it. So anyway, um, let's see. I hope my paintings radiate a lifelong 
relationship between people and the world we live in. To me, even the most moving sunset spilling from my canvas is meaningless without a witness, a touchstone or a reference point for the viewer to engage with. That is why I paint people in the landscape or in their house and a lot of situations here. Um, I use photography, uh, a lot of different photos, and compose my paintings from several different inspirations and uh, references. Um, I hope to depict nature's bounty of the spirit of hope, love, and beauty. I'm going to cry again. <laughs> Conveying the notion that Earth is merely our temporary home. And I uh, hope to, um, I hope I'm conveying visual poetry for a world that is quite scary at times, honestly. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's enough, but um, please ask questions <laughs> if you want. I'm curious, how long did it's uh, about a year and a half. Oh my God. <laughs> but that's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, yeah, it was about a year and a half of work. That, that's so. incredible. That's Thank incredible. you. I'm, I'm yep. Well, I think for me it's, um, yeah. <laughs> I really didn't meet a lot of these women until I met through everyone through Donna, who's not here, but um, she's a very uh, dear, dear friend of mine who I love dearly and, um, and total inspiration. And we, we talk <laughs> about all kinds of stuff, but it's, it's, a, per it's a perfect thing. Um, and it's a wonderful thing having friends. I mean, I couldn't have done this without all of the people who showed up Good sports and the oh, women's that. circle. And Angie is one of three paintings of her. She lives right across the street. How about that? <laughs> <It's> convenient, too. <laughs> and then um, I think Justine and I have four paintings of her, but she has little kids, so I want to paint the kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, the relief. Yeah, so touching. And I love that you're crying. I can't really hear you. Oh, I love that you were crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All this are sensitive kids. Well, I mean, I feel that. Yeah. Thanks. What was it like with your mother and family? I can't really hear you. What was it like with your mother and family? My mother, um, she was a doll maker. So she made porcelain dolls. Um, and she created them from family and neighbors. Uh, and they're kind of spooky to me. I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was a fine, uh, you know, draftsman and sculptor. And I remember for years she'd have these clay heads um, on her on the shelf in the closet. And it's the kind of clay that really smelled. I don't know. Was it oil clay, like kids' clay or something? But uh, it didn't ever dry. You know, it never hardened. It was just her her work, so, and then she became the doll maker in her later years, so, mm -hmm. so. But I'm um, I'm so grateful that you all believed in me and you, you're here. Yes. What is your future? My future? Are you going to do more? Of well, the more you know, the more I see the good art, the more I want to paint more, and then. You know, I, I get triggered when I see this beautiful lighting out there, like last night at the moon circle. Um, it's just, you know, and then people are just so fascinating to me. So um, I hope to live another 15 years anyway. That would be nice. And just keep on trying to create and, and not fall dead on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, sharing. Um, there was a, a quote, I think Picasso wrote, um, the object of life is to find your passion and the purpose of life is to share it. So um, 
thank you. And, you know, I try to encourage all friends to do creative work. And whether it's poetry, music, uh, we so need the arts in our life um, because really, you know, the, the rest is kind of messed up in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, I, I love um, the feelings that I have and being able to present them because I really, you know, for so long I didn't really know what my voice was, but I was working for, you know, corporations, so there you go. I had to find my voice and I found it here and I appreciate everyone here for coming. Please eat. Any other questions? I do want to say that I, there's a lot of you that I know here. Even if I did, and I saw your painting, I still would. And that's hard to capture somebody so completely that you can look at a portrait of them and know who they are and their struggle and their life and their kids and the love and the terror and the hardship. It's remarkable, Beverly. I've never seen a body of work like that in my life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, there are some extra posters if anyone wants to take a couple or one. And then there is a price list, and there's also um, uh, the three by five cards that have the QR code for you young ones who understand how to use it. <laughs> And then um, also there's a website with all of the stories and paintings. And, um, and also there's a list for Gicles or uh, archival prints, they call them now. And um, so take a look. Are you gonna plan a book? Yes. yes, plan to have a book. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's my original thought was to have a book, but it takes a lot. <laughs> That's what baby Jesus made plans for. for a week, um, and so most of the same work, unless you want to cash and carry, <laughs> <laughs> um, will be up there. In Taos. Yes, in Taos. Stables Gallery in Taos, July 19th. So how long will you be here at the library? Till June 25th. Yeah, so <laughs> tell all your friends. It's <laughs> <laughs> nice to have the yeah, I'm having, a, concurrently with the uh, Stables Gallery, it turns out I wanted to have the show at the Blumenschein, but that didn't realize how tiny the space was. And so, um, so I, I, it's at Stables, and then uh, provided me the opportunity to have a retrospective at the Blumenschein that same week. So that's opening on July 20th. And that's work from the East Coast, from early days here, from a variety of different places, and. And of course, people. <laughs> so there's a few landscapes, but not a lot. But um, I appreciate that you're here, and thanks for your being here and having fun and having a snack. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you.